reduce scrap and drive up profits. Hi, I'm Alan Gibbs from Blue Scope Steel. When we say drive up profits, we mean it literally. In this video, we're going to show you how to reduce enough scrap steel to buy yourself one of these. What's more, most of the suggestions we'll make don't cost much to implement. At Blue Scope, we say do it smart, save money. How much money? Well, let's look at the savings calculator, which works out how much scrap is costing you each year. Let's say scrap is running at 4 to 5% per annum. That's a pretty conservative number. Let's say you use 120 coils per month. At $1,450 a tonne, that equals about $16,000 per month in scrap. Over a year, that's enough for your Mercedes. In this video, we'll show you how to save enough money to buy this car. So what does Do It Smart actually mean? Colourbond Steel from Blue Scope Steel is a premium quality product, so it just makes sense to keep it that way. By focusing on your materials handling, storage, warehousing and transportation practices, you can reduce coil damage, which is scrap. Our experience shows managing your housekeeping and operational and safety procedures properly will make most of your scrap problems disappear. Let's start at the beginning. Bluescope produces world-class quality zinc loom and Colourbon steel. We wrap it and pack it so it leaves our factory in top condition. How do you keep it in prime condition until it reaches your customers? Retaining product quality reduces your product claims by reducing the chance of damaged product reaching your market. Reducing scrap makes your business more competitive. And our brand reputation for quality is protected in the marketplace. In this video, we give practical advice on how to reduce scrap through correct storage, correct floor protection, and in the transportation and manufacturing process. We look at lifting equipment like cranes, forklifts, and down enders. And we show how damage can be reduced when warehousing and transporting finished product. Taking these steps can reduce your scrap to below 1%. In a perfect world, we begin at the design of the factory warehouse itself. Is there enough room to properly access the coils? Are engineered storage systems in place? Is the appropriate lifting equipment installed? Is material flow through the factory designed to reduce double handling? A properly laid out factory will significantly reduce scrap. But let's assume we have to make the most of what we already have. What else can be done to minimise scrap? Be careful when using chains to handle coils. If you on-ship coils, don't use old tyres as dunnage because tyres can compress. Think about how you store coils. Incorrect storage increases handling and the risk of damage. Store your product so it doesn't require multiple handling. This reduces the risk of damage. Don't store coils on blue metal because it damages the coil's outer wraps. Proper floor protection is critical to reduce the damage to outer wraps of coils. Floor protection is available with different types of commercially available pads. Writing on the outside of wraps of coils makes it unusable. Removable labels should be used. Keep coils off the ground using appropriate materials. Don't use an upturned pallet as a cradle. It's unsafe and can damage the outer wraps. Chop coils correctly. Square timber is not a chock. Get the angle too high and the chock will slide across the floor. If the angle is too low, the coil will climb the chock and roll. When double stacking, you need to keep the same width and outside coil diameter of the coils together to get a stable stack. Don't put big coils on little coils. Don't put soft coils on the bottom row. Multiple stacking requires an engineered stacking system or it's unsafe. An unsuitable rack with sharp edges damages the bottom of the coil. Ensure the rack is the correct width and padded to minimise damage. You've got to work through your flashing off cuts. If you don't, they'll end up in the bin because they'll get damaged. Steel racking is unsuitable unless the padding is checked regularly as sharp edges will cut through the padding, in this case, carpet. Avoid sharp protrusions in the racking system. Don't store out in the open, exposed to the weather. Coils must have a fixed chock at the end of rows. Good operating and safety procedures, together with good housekeeping, will reduce a lot of damage problems. Good practice is to have the floor marked out in squares. Coils are kept apart so they can be handled without damage to adjacent coils. 
All the coils are neatly stacked, neatly chopped. To save room, go up with a correctly engineered system because you can stack coils too high. Ensure the mast of the forklift is long enough to get high enough to place coils without damaging them. Bluescope Steel recommends that narrow horizontal coils with a height to width ratio of greater than two to one should be stored, supported by racking. Otherwise, they can be unstable and cause accidents. Keep different size coils separated. Where necessary, put arrest systems in place so if something falls, it's caught. Or install an arrestor system that simply keeps the top coil from falling off. If space is a problem, shipping containers make a good outside storage area. You don't need council permission and you don't need to build a shed. Next, let's look at lifting equipment. The most common problem is unprotected contact when moving coils. And metal on metal usually means damage. Look at these. Chains have marked every coil in this bay because a spreader bar was not used. The bar must be slightly wider than the width of the coil or this type of damage results. Coils are cut to a certain width for a certain profile. Edge damage like this renders the product unsellable. If a C-hook is used, it needs to have a rubber nose. Here is an example of damage where the nose has come off and not been replaced. It's just poor maintenance. Sharp edges on a lifting device mean when a coil is lifted, it creases the inside wraps. Not one wrap, several wraps will be damaged. Congested stacking risks a forklift putting time damage into a coil. A dent like this damages multiple wraps. It's just scrap. That's thousands of dollars down the drain. Down ending coils without proper equipment causes damage. How many coils were ruined to create this kind of damage? Each of these divots represents a damaged coil with multiple wraps turned into scrap. Prevention is a matter of proper protection and using equipment suitable for the job. Here are some examples of mandrel damage. Up to 85% of mandrels are badly designed. When you see this, you need to fix your mandrel because it can damage every coil it touches. If it exerts uneven pressure, it will damage the inner wraps of the coil. Distorted coils from bad mandrels also compromise storage. Get a suitable mandrel and maintain it. You can see the mandrel creases in this finished product. The more times it's loaded, the more damage occurs. This coil's inside wraps are ruined and this can be prevented by a steel or polyurethane sleeve. One low cost alternative method of uncoiling is a cassette type mandrel using a gantry crane or a forklift with an attachment. Finally, we're going to be looking at moving and storing finished product and preparing it for shipment to the customer. Putting your racking on wheels means it can be moved to where access is convenient. The simple trolley is very handy indeed. A little tug system like those used in hospitals to tow the beds can be used to handle heavy materials. Shipping the finished product to the customer is the last part of the process. And because it's the last, this is when any damage really costs you. Here we see finished product not stored correctly. Wet bundles of sheets exposed to weather can stain the finished product. This product's just been hit with a forklift after it's been right through the mill. Damage here costs not only the steel, but the processing costs as well. Damage like this ruins the whole bundle. This is now all scrap. If space is an issue, you can build a lean-to with a sliding door or curtain to keep out the weather. Use correct load restraint. Too much tension crushes the product. Use appropriate corner and edge protectors to avoid crush damage. If the restraint is too loose, then the load can shift in transit and damage the product. The load should be weatherproofed using appropriate wrapping. Appropriate dunnage should be used to separate different product loads. Don't place heavy objects on profiles which can suffer transport damage. And finally, when using forklifts, slings, cranes or other lifting equipment to load finished product, ensure the load weight is evenly distributed. Here's a quick review. If you manage your housekeeping and operating and safety procedures, most of your scrap problems will disappear. We've given you some do's and don'ts for storing coils. We've looked at warehousing and proper transportation. If you target scrap to be less than 1% using these ideas, you'll reap substantial savings and you'll be more competitive.
You'll have fewer damage complaints and less rework. And you'll be protecting the good name of both of our brands. Don't work harder, work smarter and save.